to welcome you to this, to Bali, to the IGF and to this pre-event on internet rights and human rights. Thank you. If you could close that door, please. Thanks. Um, as I said, my name's Joy. I'm a program coordinator for internet rights and human rights at APC. And we're very excited today because we have um, today our inaugural run-through of our internet rights and human rights curriculum. And you're our first 25 distinguished guests and participants um, to be going through this uh, workshop with us. So I just want to thank you, personally thank you for registering, for being interested in um, this day, and to thank you for committing to being with us in this workshop for the day. Um, and running through all four, four modules. Just a few logistical things before we start, and I'll, I'll run you through what the agenda will be for the day. Um, we're going to start, and I'll introduce you shortly to David Souter, um, who will run us uh, through most of the morning session, uh, where we'll be looking at some introductory concepts into internet rights and human rights, working through some case studies, and looking at freedom of expression and freedom of information. Uh, the lunch break will be at about half past 12, uh, for three quarters of an hour, and we'll have um, uh, an Indonesian, we're having an Indonesian buffet outside the room. Then at quarter past one, we'll resume in the afternoon uh, with two more modules, on, one on freedom of association and, with, and one on privacy. At the end of the day, what we're going to do is look at the week ahead at the IGF uh, program, look at the internet rights related workshops that there will be, and just ask you to reflect on what are the responsibilities of citizens. Uh, and those are the interesting and important challenges. Uh, uh, and for both those who are concerned with the internet and both those who are concerned with human rights, um, uh, it's important not to say, not, not simply to, to say. Um, what you want to publish, do you have the language? Uh, a language that is, is used by the people you wish to influence. Do you have the skills to put material together and publish content? Do you have access to the infrastructure to do that publication? Uh, clearly those resources are very differently available to different groups. Um, I don't have as much freedom of expression, you might say, as Rupert Murdoch does because he has four newspapers in my country um, and I have none. Um, society, freedom to participate in cultural life uh, and to use your own uh, language. Uh, so it's, uh, I think freedom of expression and freedom of information can be located within that sequence of rights which are, are about what an individual can think, say, and do. Um, and I've got a rather, uh, not terribly good picture which tries to link some of these two. expression. Um, and if you think back to the previous session I talked about, I mentioned Article 29 of the Universal Declaration, which set out uh, limitations concerning respect for the rights of others and um, the protection of national security, public order, and moral, and moral objectives. Well, that Article 29 of the Universal Declaration is uh, turned up again in the third clause of Article 19 of the International Covenant. So it's explicitly related to freedom of expression in the International Covenant. Uh, and it has the same, essentially the same provisions. Um, the, the right to freedom of expression conveys, carries with it special duties and responsibilities. Again, you have this concept here of a relationship between rights and responsibilities, which is highly contentious and contested. Um, uh, and that it can be limited, but only, and the word only is very important here, 
as provided in law, uh, so dependency on national law, and where it is necessary for respect for the, to ensure respect for the rights or reputations of others, and the protection of national security, public order, public health or morals. Now, but there are issues of interpretation here around what those two things mean. Um, there's also within the International Covenant an explicit prohibition of one form of expression. So Article 20 of the International Covenant prohibits propaganda for war and any advocacy of national, racial or religious hatred that constitutes incitement to discrimination, hostility or violence. Uh, and it's also the case that, it, that international law prohibits incitement to genocide and incitement to terrorism. So in those contexts, what you have are elements in international and in the rights regime which are explicitly saying together, um, so freedom of uh, belief and opinion uh, as a starting point, um, a freedom of information being the material that is accessed by Mr. Representational uh, uh, object there. Uh, freedom of expression being that person's uh, um, adding to the uh, the amount of opinion and information and ideas which is out there in the public space. Uh, so the individual is acquiring and uh, acquiring information and ideas through freedom of information is expressing information and ideas through freedom of expression. Freedom of association is about that individual's relationship with the other individuals. Freedom of assembly is about the relationship between the individual and groups uh, and the ability of groups to work together in order to pursue objectives. Um, so let's start with what is usually taken as the meaning of freedom of expression and, and information which is Article 19 of the Universal Declaration. The wording of that is there. Um, it's the wording that you usually see quoted uh, when freedom of expression is being discussed. Everyone shall have the, freedom, the right to freedom of opinion and expression. This right includes freedom to hold opinion. Organization, your country. Don't take a lot of time, please. Um, just, just give us a brief sentence to answer the following question. Welcome. Welcome back. How was that? <laughs> 
one sentence to answer the following question. When was the first time you associated with someone online? Or assembly. Or assembly. The first time you associated or assembled with somebody online. Because remember, this is about freedom of assembly and association. Sure. I mean, we can just start. Let's give you a chance to catch your breath. We can start with. Heads up. I thought I'd name my book. So I'm Analia Lavin. I work for the APC for the communications team. I think uh, when I first associated with someone online, it was the first time that I was uh, accessing the internet on a shopping mall when they were pro promoting it. And I just went into a chat and made a Chilean friend. Um, so that was good. And I'm from your wife. Hello, my name is Roy, uh, from Make Everyone Come. Um, we're based in UK, but we work on women issues in Africa using technology. The last time I was in the UK, uh, every day half of my team uh, is all over the world. I have never seen most of them. So, yeah, for the day. I'm doing now a very important paper because it's the fifth year with the 40th anniversary of the military group uh, to defeat the Yemen. So there was a lot of uh, oh, there was, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of talking about the thing. So this international uh, organization uh, tried to make you know something visible um, around the the national stadium where the, where the play was to be played because there was a sort of torture at that time. So the point is that this uh, campaign was about to ask the play the soccer players. To, uh, not to play goal and not to celebrate the first goal that they, you know, wanted to uh, make of this product. Oh, this product, sorry. So they call it a, a golden silencio, like the silent goal. Mm -hmm. And asking for the soccer players to, to not celebrate, you know, the first, which is, is, is a bit lame if you think a little bit. But I think it's important as an example because, of course, if you want like two zero or something and not what I mean, uh, the, the, all the campaign was totally forgotten at the time. But I think it's important I and mean, it's interesting because however it was uh, very well driven at some part with a lot of resources uh, with this international organization, uh, you need to have your feet on the ground when you're trying to plan you know, an online campaign with an offline result. I'm not trying to say that, you know, uh, that this is, you know, that, that it is difficult, that it's, you can't do that. What I'm trying to say is you need to have your feet on the ground. And my feeling at the time was a very, you know, uh, well hard driving campaign, but at the same time was wasn't so uh, smart to do that at that time. <laughs>